Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for our Wednesday night teaching. We're so glad that you're with us and that you're hungry to get into the Word. Hey, if you've been with us for any length of time on Wednesday night, we are in one of the most important series I believe that we're in right now, and that's all about kingdom prayers. Uh, with all the things that are going on in the world today, all the things that are going on in our communities and uh, throughout the nation and election year and the war is waging, the spiritual war is waging and if the church, if there ever was a time for the church to rise up in the authority that God has given her, the time is now. And so we've been talking the last several weeks about uh, our prayer life, uh, the prayer life individually, our prayer life corporately and we're going to continue along those lines tonight. Uh, but before we get into the word, as I'm mentioning prayer, I wanted to let you know that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the gazebo in Clarksville, on the square there in Clarksville at the gazebo, there is a community-wide prayer meeting uh, that's being organized, uh, not by me or putting put together by us as Revive Church, but there's several pastors coming together. There's going to be some worship, and we're going to be praying for our community, praying for revival, praying for God to come and do only what he can do uh, in our lives and in our community. Uh, I was uh, asked to be a part of that prayer meeting tomorrow night, and I'm going to be there and taking a small segment to lead uh, in praying for the healing of our land. So I'm excited to be able to be there with other local pastors right here in our community that are coming together uh, in a sign of unity to pray together for our community. So if you want to come out and be a part of that, you're welcome to. That's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, at the gazebo there in Clarksville. So we're excited about that. I also want to let you know Sunday Fun Day is coming up July the 19th. Uh, we're so excited about our time together after the morning service. I wanted you to mark your calendars for that. Food will be provided for you. And immediately after the service, we are going to go to the Aquatic Center in Clarksville. Behind the Aquatic Center is a picnic pavilion. Uh, and so we're going to have food there. Uh, provided for you, and it would be a great time of fellowship and for us to be together. Also, uh, Pastor Jesse Frady will be here uh, from Kingsport, Tennessee on July the 19th, that Sunday morning. We're excited to have him here ministering and bringing the word, and so just wanted to let you know that. So before we do get into the word, won't you take a moment and share this video? Uh, go ahead, and, and we say this every week, take the opportunity to be a be an evangelist and go ahead and share this video. Uh, you never know who might be ministered by the word that's going to come forth tonight. And the last thing before we get into the word, thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your financial contribution and your giving uh, to Revive Church. It allows us to continue to sow into missions right here in our community and in our missionaries that we support as well. If you want to give tonight, uh, you can go to myrevivechurch.com slash give. And there's a place there for you to give securely online. So thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving to the Lord. Um, and if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn with me to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, and I want to open with a word of prayer uh, as we get into the word. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to break open your word tonight corporately together. I thank you for every listener and every person that will listen to this uh, message tonight. May it take root in our hearts and bear fruit in our life. I pray you stir up the spirit of prayer on the inside of each and every one of us, that you awaken us, God, out of the place of slumber, that you would awaken us out of the place of uh, laziness. Uh, if there's any area in our life that we've been lethargic in our prayer life, Father, we just ask that you come and stir us up tonight, that you would stir us up to be prayer warriors prayer partners with you that you help us take our prayer to a new level and a new dimension father i speak peace over every home and every listener and we do pray that lord your spirit would just descend upon us tonight that you would stir in us and open up our eyes to see and our ears to hear in jesus name amen amen matthew chapter 18 uh, we talked about prayer foundation being intimacy uh, we have talked several things uh, about prayer in intercession prayer. The last couple of weeks we talked about the prayer of intercession and the importance of it. And tonight I want to talk a little bit about 
the authority that we have in prayer. Tonight's going to be really a, uh, an introduction, uh, laying a little bit of a foundation, and I think over the next couple of weeks we're going to dive deeper into this thing of authority uh, and the authority that God's given us. I think it's very important that we understand that to be effective uh, in our prayer life. And so I want to go to a scripture in Matthew chapter 18, uh, and these are the words of Jesus, and here's what he says in Matthew 18, 18. He says, As surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. These are the words of Jesus when he was uh, speaking to his disciples and he was telling them there's so much in these in this uh, couple of passages of scripture here that we could go. He talks about uh, agreement, which we will talk about that at a different time. But when he when he says this in verse 18, he says, surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What we must understand is the scripture teaches us in Ephesians 6 that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. And God has given us the ability to pray binding and loosing prayers, that there are things that we can bind and there are things that we can loose. And the, the, the prayer of binding and loosing is this, it's an authoritative prayer. It is a prayer of authority and God has called his disciples, he's called his people to pray from the place of authority. And Jesus was establishing this prayer of authority. He was, he was establishing this this authority that he was releasing to his disciples and he was telling us that this prayer of binding and loosing is an authoritative prayer. Bind means this, I'm just going to kind of teach you for a moment, bind means to tie, to imprison, to confine, to impede, to hinder, and to prohibit. How many know the scripture teaches us that the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? The enemy comes in so many forms and so many fashions that the scripture even teaches us that he can come as an angel of light. That's why it's important that we are close to the Father, that we can hear his voice, and that we can recognize where the enemy is coming to try to kill, steal, and destroy. Because that's what Jesus told us, that the thief cometh to do this, to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. And the prayer of binding and loosing, the word bind means that we are to tie, we are to Im imprison, confine, impede, hinder, and to prohibit. The enemy will try to do everything he can to hinder the life flow of God in our life personally, in our marriage, in our children, in our communities, in our nation. The thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus was saying, I've given the church, I've given my people this authority to bind the enemy. That we can bind the enemy. Sickness we can bind through the power of the gospel, through the power of the word of God. That we have this authority in prayer to bind sickness, disease, hatred. Listen, hatred, there is a spirit of hatred that's working uh, in our communities, in our world, but God has given his people the authority to bind hatred. What does that mean to, to tie, to imprison, to confine, to impede, to hinder, to prohibit things from happening in our cities, in our community, in our nation? That we are to come against the powers of darkness. That's the thing about authoritative prayer of binding and loosing is that God has given us authority to come against the wiles, the schemes, the plans, the tactics of the enemy. That we are to rise up. Loose means this. Loose means to permit, to remove the hindrances, to untie, and to set free. Authoritative prayer opens things, listen to this, authorita authoritative prayer opens things in the heavens and shifts things on the earth. 
See, back to what I was saying in the beginning, there is a spiritual enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. There are principalities and powers. There are spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And this authoritative prayer of binding and loosing allows us to stand in the place of the authority that Christ has given us to bind the enemy and loose the peace of God, the rivers of God, the blessings of God. Because loose means to permit, it means to remove the hindrances, to untie, to set set free. And so back to what I said, authoritative prayer opens things in the heavenlies because the fight is in the heavenlies. It is in the atmosphere of the heavenlies, the heavenly atmosphere. And when we bind things in the spirit, when we loose things in the spirit, when we stand in the place of authority, authoritative prayer opens things in the heavenlies. And when things are opened in the heavenlies, it begins to shift things in the earth. Let me put it this way. If you're dealing with things in your marriage and you are fighting back and forth with your spouse, maybe you need to get to this place of prayer where you begin to bind things in the heavenlies so it begins to shift things in the earth. Maybe there's things going on at your job, in your work. Maybe there's things going on that we even see right here in our community. Things that are going on in our nation. The enemy working to try to hinder the plan that God has for families, for churches, for individuals. That The plan that God has for the United States of America, the enemy does not want the kingdom agenda and the kingdom plan of God to come forth because the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that in the book of Romans. But what it takes is a church rising up, a people, not not an organization. The church is people. It takes you and I and many others in the body of Christ to begin to rise up and understand this authority that God has given us that we can bind the enemy and we can loose the things of God. And when we do, we begin to see things shift in the earth. It is what God has called us to. And what is authoritative prayer really? Let me just define for a moment what authoritative prayer really is. It is this. It's it's exercising your God-given authority over the enemy of your soul. The enemy has no right to kill, steal, and destroy. He has no authority to kill, steal, and destroy. All that he has is what we give him. The only ground he can take is what we allow him to take. The only way that he can steal our marriage or steal our finances, the only way that he can steal our peace or rob us of joy, the only way that he can take away our freedoms is if we allow him to do that. He has no right, he has no authority, he has no power because Jesus defeated him when he, when he died, when he shed his blood. And Jesus has all authority and he's delegated that authority to us. And so binding and loosing authoritative prayer is you and I exercising our God-given authority over the enemy of our soul. Let me put it this way, authoritative prayer is a proclamation. We should be making decrees and we should be making proclamations. We should be speaking life over our families, over our health, over our finances, over our community, over our nation. Listen, I know that in the, in the news media there is so much negativity. There is so, uh, there's so much that tries to rob us of our faith. But we must be declaring the goodness of God. We must be declaring that God is greater than the enemy. We must be declaring that God is greater than Corona and COVID-19. God is greater than the enemy that's trying to tear things down and rip things apart. God is greater and we need to be as the church proclaiming the greatness of God. Declaring the word of God. Decreeing the plans of God and the purpose of God. And that's the authoritative prayer that I'm talking about talking about tonight. It is a proclamation. It is speaking the will of God into your situation, my situation, into the situation that may be going on in our community, in our nation. We need to be speaking the will of God. And we need to understand that the will of God is greater. Authoritative prayer is this. I I, I wanted to write this down because authoritative prayer is not necessarily loud. 
Come on, I like to get loud when I pray. I like to get my emotions in my prayer sometimes. I just get stirred up by the Spirit of God, and sometimes I can get loud. But authoritative prayer is not necessarily always loud. Authority is being confident in what you know is true and exercising that authority. You know how it is if you have children, you are the authority over your children, and you can speak to them and tell them to do a certain thing, but a lot of times we have to get loud. But authoritative prayer is not necessarily always loud. So I want to give you some keys to authoritative prayer. I want to give you a few scriptural keys tonight. And like I said, we're just laying a foundation tonight. And over the next few weeks, I want us to dive deeper into this authority that we have as a believer. Because it's so important that we understand it and that we walk in it, especially in the place of prayer. But tonight, let me give you a few keys to uh, to authoritative prayer. Number one is this. We must recognize, not only must we recognize, but we must realize that all authority has been given unto Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate authority. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the word and he was the word made flesh. And so in Jesus is this word, this word is Jesus, he is the word made flesh, and all authority has been given unto Jesus. Listen to Matthew 28 and 18, it says this, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Can I just say, Jesus is the stuff. (laughs) Jesus is is all that and a bag of chips. Jesus is everything and he has all authority. He cannot be defeated. There is no one greater than him. There is no disease, there is no sickness, there is no sin, there is no enemy, there is no darkness, not darkness. There is nothing greater and nothing that has more authority than Jesus. He said all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. He is the, he, he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He cannot be defeated. And we must recognize that all authority has been given unto him. He is the ultimate authority. And when we take a look at what authority is, let me just define authority. Authority is this. It's the power or right to give orders. It is the power or the right to give orders, to make decisions, and to enforce obedience. Oh, I know some of you just said, oh, I like that. I like to give orders. <laughs> I like to bark orders. I like, I, 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 I like that. I like, to, I like to enforce obedience. We do that with our children. I brought you in this world. I will take you out. You will do what I tell you to do. We understand authority to a degree. But authority is that. It is the power and the right to be able to give orders, to make decisions, to enforce obedience. Authority, a person or organization having power or control in a particular situation, uh, typically political or administrative, in that sphere of influence. That you understand the sheriff has Authority. You understand that people in government places and judges and, you know, uh, president, you know, the list could go on and on. There is this authority uh, to be able to control, to be able to rule in a particular area. But I'm talking about spiritual authority tonight because we can understand authority in the natural, but in the spirit, in the place of prayer, in the prayer of binding and loosing, the place of authority in prayer, God has given us authority to be able to do just what I said in the spirit, to be able to enforce obedience, to be able to bind the enemy, the strong man. To be able to come against spirits of division and religion and spirits of heaviness and oppression and depression. Listen, for some of you parents tonight, with things that are going on in your children's life, you need to be, begin to bind the enemy that's working in their life. 
You need to get in their bedroom with them. You need to, you need to anoint them with oil. You need to pray over them. You need, to, you need to come against the things that are coming against you, that are coming against your family. You need to stand in that place of authority. So many times we allow the enemy to wreak havoc in our lives, in our families, in our children. And we need to stand in that place of authority to take authority over depression, to take authority over suicidal thoughts and the, 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 the enemy of suicide. We can't, we can't just sit back and think that, you know what, maybe, maybe if I had enough money, if I had enough stuff, if I had the right clothes, if I had the right counselor, if I get the right therapy, then I'm going to be okay. No, all that stuff is fine and good, but we've got to stand in the place of authority over the enemy of our soul, the enemy of our life, the enemy of our children, the enemy of our marriage, the enemies of our community. We've got to stand in that place of authority and realize that all authority has been given to Jesus. He is the ultimate authority. And we have, to, we have to enforce obedience that the enemy cannot have our life. He cannot have our families. And he cannot have our children. Why? Because Jesus is the authority and the author of all power. And you may be facing some enemies tonight. You may be facing th some things in your life that you feel overwhelmed by. You may be facing some circumstances tonight. But let me encourage you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And Jesus is the ultimate authority in every assignment of the enemy that has been assigned to your life that has been assigned to your children, I come in agreement with you tonight that the enemy must flee in Jesus' name. I just come in agreement that, that, that Jesus is the authority of all power and sickness has no power. Disease has no power to stay. Suicide has no power to stay. Rejection has no power to stay. I just come in agreement with you tonight that whatever's going on in your family, whatever's going on in your personal life, every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus, we bind you. We say you have no authority and you have no you have no power purpose in our life and that no weapon that's formed against God's people will prosper in Jesus name. Come on, I need you to get in agreement with me that whatever's in your home, you need to stand up in your home right now and you need to bind it in the name of Jesus and say you cannot operate in my home anymore in the name of Jesus that the plans of the enemy will not prosper any longer. It is time, y'all, that we get serious about the things of God and the authority that God has placed on the inside of us, and we walk and we exercise it because it is true. It is not just good preaching and something to say. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But some of you hadn't stirred up what's on the inside of you in weeks, in months, in days. We need to stir up the spirit spirit on the inside of us and realize that you know what enough is enough you can't have my children enough is enough you can't have my marriage enough is enough because the word of God declares that I can bind the enemy and he cannot operate in my life but so many people Christians believe the lie I'm just gonna have to suffer through this and this is just the way it's gonna be but no Jesus is the author of all power. Listen to what he says. The word says in Hebrews 12 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. How many times, if you were here Sunday morning, I said it many times, we trust in our blessings more than we do the blesser. How many times have we looked to so many other things instead of Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith? How many times when something goes crazy in our lives, in our community, in our family, or maybe with our children, that we look to so many things for answers instead of getting on our face and crying out to God and hearing he, what He has to say and then standing up in authority and exercising that authority over the enemy of our soul of our families and our life, looking unto Jesus, 
because he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The key to this authoritative prayer is recognizing and realizing that all authority has been given unto Jesus, and Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is your friend. Jesus is your intercessor. Jesus is your very present help in the time of need. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, the one who never sleeps or slumbers. Jesus, just, the, just saying his name. My gosh, I feel this so strong that some of, some of us tonight just need to walk around our home declaring the name of Jesus. Well, Pastor, we were fighting and cussing each other 20 minutes ago. That's okay. Still declare. It's not really okay, but still declare the name of Jesus. Invite him in. Declare his name. There is power in his name. Recognize and realize that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Depression must bow. Fear must bow. Suicide must bow. Sickness must bow. Disease must bow. Anxiety must bow at the name of Jesus. Do we believe it tonight that if we just declare his name and keep declaring and keep speaking his name, come on, recognize and realize that we are to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The second thing that I want to say is this. If he has been given all authority, such as I have, give I thee. You've heard that in the book of Acts. When Peter and John were at the gate beautiful, well, Jesus has been given all authority from the Father who is in heaven. And what we must understand, too, is that Jesus has delegated to us his authority. How many has ever delegated something to somebody and it didn't get done? <laughs> Come on, I've had an issue with delegation before in my past because usually, sometimes, not always... Thank God I have people around me now that when I delegate things to them, things get done. But how many has ever delegated something to somebody and it did not get done and left you in a state of frustration and you're just like, forget it, I just need to do it myself. It happens so many times and I wonder what Jesus thinks when he has delegated authority to his church, but his church ain't stirred up about nothing but the things that are going on in the news media. When the church isn't stirred up about nothing but the fear and the anxiety and the worry, and we're not stirred up to the things of God. We're not stirred up to the delegation that Jesus has delegated us, the authority that it's not stirred up. Listen, it is time to get stirred up. It is time to get stirred up into, in, in the Word of God and get the Spirit stirring on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit, not the spirit of fear, not the spirit of anxiety, not the spirit of worry, not the spirit of doubt. And I wonder, like when we delegate things to somebody and it leaves us frustrated because they don't get done, I sit back and I just wonder how Jesus feels sometimes when he's delegated authority to his church. Hebrews says he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He come, he did what he was supposed to do here on the earth, and he raised up disciples, and he said, listen, y'all, I am going away, but it's to your advantage that I go away, because when I go away, I'm leaving you responsible as disciples. I'm leaving you with authority. I'm leaving you with the tools. I'm leaving you with my word to be able to walk in all that the Father has provided for us and what I have provided for you through my blood and through my death and burial and resurrection. He, he even said, and I think it's John 14, he even said, listen, the works that I do, greater works shall you do. That's for everybody. That's not just for the pastor. That's not just for the apostle or the prophet. No, Jesus, I, I just begin to wonder how Jesus feels when, when he sees a church, uh, and I'm talking about as a whole, that, that is not stirred up, that's not passionate, that's not praying prayers of authority and exercising the authority over the enemy of their soul and their life. I'm wondering what he's thinking as he's sitting at the right hand of the Father and saying, I have delegated this to you, but you just ain't getting it done. I don't believe that he's mad. I don't believe that, that God's love ever changes for us, but I wonder if Jesus could feel frustration 
I know that he did when he was here on the earth. He was frustrated with religious people that could pray long prayers and give money, but they didn't walk in the life that he was here to give them. Listen, we have a responsibility to walk in the authority that he's delegated to us. Tonight, I want you to understand that you have been delegated authority. Yes, you. Yes, grandmama, you. Yes, little one that may be watching you. No matter what age you are. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and he is Lord of your life, he has delegated his authority unto you. His authority is not just for a special few. Let me say it again. His authority is not just for a special few. Because all that call upon him and and, and surrender their life to him are all special. The Bible tells us that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people. His authority is for every person who becomes a disciple. He establishes this in Luke 10, 19. The scripture says, Behold, 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 I give you the authority. You, me, disciples, single mom, stay-home mom, working mom, single dad, grandma, grandpa, teenager, whoever, under the sound of my voice, he says, he says, I give you the authority. Sometimes we're waiting on God to give us a breakthrough when he's wanting us to be stirred up and rise up in authority and believe that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He said, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. Listen, this authority has been delegated unto us. But what we do with it is up to us. Let me go on to this other key that I want to share with you. Look at what Jesus said about authoritative prayer. Mark chapter 11, 22 through 24. Recognize that all authority has been given to Jesus. Jesus has delegated it to us. Follow me. Jesus has delegated it to us, and what we do with it is up to us. Now listen to what Jesus says about this authoritative prayer and the authority that he's delegated to us. Mark eleven twenty two says this. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Not in your blessings, not in your job, not in your education. All those things are great and good, but he said, have faith in God. Why? Because God never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He will never fail you. He will never let you down. Economical systems will fail. Men will fail. Pastors will fail. I'm not trying to prophesy doom and gloom. You know, uh, moms and dads will fail. We 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 will mess up. There is no one that is perfect, but there is one who is, and his name is Jesus. He he is God. He is the he is Father in heaven. He said, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. See what you say with authority. That's what he's establishing here about authoritative prayer. He said, whatever you say and not doubt in your heart. Listen, you may have doubt in your head, but if your heart is firmly fixed on the promises of God, he says, listen, be for surely I say to you, whatever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Jesus was saying here that authoritative prayer is you speaking and declaring the word of God over your family, over your children, over your community, over the nation. I keep saying that repeatedly because I believe that we are in a moment of time in our history that the church must rise up in authority, not over people, but over principalities and powers. 
I, I, I've said it five times maybe already tonight. Get stirred up about the things of God. Get stirred up about the authority that he's given us. And rise to the occasion that we have right now to push back the darkness. There is an enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy our freedoms. Our freedoms to worship. Our freedoms to declare the word of God. Our freedoms to meet together. The enemy is coming in like a flood. But the Bible says the the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Can I tell you something tonight? We are called to be that standard. That's why it's important that we stir ourselves up and stir up the gift of God on the inside of us. And he says, whatever things you say, when you say and speak the word of God. Some of us always say, I hope I don't get sick. I hope I don't get corona. I hope this don't happen. I hope this don't happen. I hope that don't happen. I hope my kid don't do this. I hope school is that. I hope that lunch ain't bad. I hope I hope I did. And and on and on and on. And we need to be saying what God's word says. Listen, I'm guilty of it sometimes too. We, we get negativity and we want to speak negative because all we see is negative many times. But it's time that we walk in the authority that God's given us. He said, what, whoever says to this mountain, your mountain could be anything tonight. Listen, authoritative prayer is this. It's more from God, not to God. Let that sink in just for a moment. Let me try to say it in a different way. Authoritative prayer is more from God, not to God. You've heard people say this before. Hey, don't talk to, uh, don't uh, don't talk about your mountain. Talk to your mountain. So authoritative prayer is more from God, not to God. Let me say it like this. We can pray to God. That's a prayer of petition, or we can pray with God. I'm letting that sink in. I know it feels awkward. He ain't saying nothing right now. Let me say it again. Authoritative prayer is more from God. It is the prayers of heaven. It is the word of God that we're declaring in authority. That Satan, you cannot have my child. The word says, if I train them up in the way they should go, they will not depart from it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every enemy that's trying to take my child away from the destiny that you created for them. I take authority over the enemy and the influences that will pull them away. Hey, and then sometimes you got to make sure they ain't, they, the, the door is not open through their phone. you got to make sure the door is not open through the friends that they hang out with. Hey, I know that's not popular anymore to say. I know a lot of times people just want to be friends with their kids and this and that and everything else. And that's quite all right. But you know what? It's not that I, you, you don't trust your kids. You don't trust the enemy that's trying to take them out of the plan and the purpose of God. An authoritative prayer is coming in agreement with God's word. And it, it, it's not to God. It's with God. It's partnering with God and speaking to God. Listen, when we pray to God, that is a prayer of petition. But authoritative prayer is not praying to God. It's praying with God and getting in agreement and declaring the word of the Lord over your situation. It is speaking the word. It is speaking the truth. It is proclaiming his word over your circumstance or your situation. I love the story. I'm not going to share the whole story in Exodus when, when the Red Sea was parted. We all know that story. If you don't, you can go to Exodus 14 and read it. But I want to take this out of that story uh, in Exodus 14, verse 15 and 16. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? This is when the, 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 the children of Israel wanted to go back. They didn't want to go forward. They said it's better back there. Why did you lead us out here to die? The enemies are coming against the, the, the children of God, the children of Israel. And there's a Red Sea in front of them. And it just looks like doom and gloom. And Jesus, I, I mean, the word says, the Lord says, why are you crying to me? Why are you crying to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. God was saying, I've already prepared the way for you. I've already made a way for you. You are to go forward. He says this, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. 
The Lord was saying that why do you keep crying out to me when I've already given, given you a promise and I know that your circumstances look like you are about to die. I know that your circumstances look like that, you know what, there is no way out of this situation. But the Lord was saying, don't cry to me. I've already given you the plan and the purpose. You stand up in the authority. You march forward. You you stretch forth your rod and the sea will divide. That is what I'm talking about tonight in this place of authority. When God has already given you his promise that sometimes we can't just be crying out to God to do something in a certain situation. We need to, we need to stand in the authority and not just have a prayer to God, but have prayer with God and declare his word over our situation and over the mountain. That we may be, may be facing. And so that's what we see in the book of Exodus. And as we get ready to wrap this thing up tonight. Uh, I even talked about this. Probably the last couple of weeks. But I want to I say it again. And I want to hit this again just really quick. That authoritative prayer is praying the word in Jesus name. Authoritative prayer is when we pray the word in Jesus' name. And I, I, and I mentioned this, and I'm going to keep mentioning this because it's so important. And we talked about this last week. But what does God say about your situation? What does God say about your health, your finances, your mind, your emotions? What does God say about fear, prosperity? What does God say about our nation? What does God say? You find out what God says, and you pray that in Jesus' name. We talked about that last week. How do we pray the word? We find out what God says about the situation, and we speak what God says into the atmosphere. We speak what God says into the atmosphere, and when we speak what God says, faith begins to rise up in our heart because Romans 10 and 17 says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and hearing by the word of God. So we got to speak that word, speak that word. And let me just say this, because I've said this many times in February when my mother was going through what she was going through and was in ICU for 14 days and on a ventilator and all these things. I was praying the word. I was standing in authority. And what you've got to realize is you've got to keep standing in authority. And my last point that I want to make when it comes to authoritative prayer is don't assume you know how God wants to move. Don't assume that you know how God wants to move in your situation. That's what happens. That was a fight that I had back in February. Because I was decreeing things, declaring things, standing in the place of authority, getting frustrated why this didn't happen. Just wanting her to jump up out of the bed, rip everything off of her arms and everything else and start doing a jig. Do it. Getting jiggy with it in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway. But it didn't happen that way. But the ultimate thing that happened is God fulfilled his promise. And I just want to encourage you that when you stand in the place of praying in authority, don't assume you know how God's going to move, but just know that he will move. He will do what he said he will do. Just know that he will move. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Use discernment even when you're praying for others and you're playing in this place of authority. And the final thing is this. You've got to stay humble before the Lord. I've seen people that begin to realize, hey, I've got authority in Jesus. I've got, I, I'm a believer, so I have authority. And I've seen people get prideful in their authority and whenever you pray authoritative prayers, you stay humble before the Lord. Don't assume that you know how God wants to move, but know that God will move and that you have authority. Come on, let me pray with you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the authority that you are in our life. Thank you for the authority of your word, and I thank you that you've delegated it unto us. And I pray, Father, that you would stir in us deep intimacy, a sense of belonging in the kingdom, that you would stir passion and fire, that you would help us be the citizens of the kingdom that you've called us to be, to walk in authority. God, I pray tonight that every home and every person that's listening under the sound of my voice that may be dealing 
with influences of the enemy, plans and attacks and schemes of the enemy. I pray, God, tonight that you would ignite in their hearts the authority that you've delegated unto them, that even as we get off of this Facebook Live, that they will walk around their house declaring the word of the Lord. God, I thank you that there will be parents tonight that even as their children are in their room sleeping, that they will stand outside their door, their their, their children's door, and they will declare the word of the Lord and take a Authority over depression and oppression. They will take authority over anxiety and panic attacks. They will take authority over the things that may be going on in their lives, in their homes, in their families, God. I thank you, Lord, that you will just strengthen every person and every individual tonight, Lord, and that you will stir up faith. And I come in agreement with them tonight that the enemy of their soul, the enemy of their marriage, the enemy that comes against their children, Your weapons will not prosper in Jesus' name. We speak to you, enemy, and we command you to flee out of their life, out of their home. We declare the name of Jesus is greater. So strengthen every believer tonight and help us to walk in this place of authoritative prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Sunday morning, 930, right here in the sanctuary, we're having corporate prayer. We'll have service at 1030. We'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your week. We love you.